So you see, that's where the trouble began. That smile. That damn smile. So, I was working on editing a pretty research-heavy video on a theory called the Just Word Hypothesis, when something so absolutely freaking sensational and kind of related happened that I just had to throw in my two cents and try to make some sense of it. What happened? Well, it depends on who you ask and when you asked them. But on Friday, January 18th of 2019, this video was recorded and became virally explosive like diarrhea. <laughs> This video was widely reported on by the mainstream media as being evidence of a gang of young, obviously racist, MAGA hat wearing teens from Kentucky, an all boys school because patriarchy, am I right? An all boys Catholic school because Western civilization is evil, am I right? Being here in the District of Columbia to disrespect women's rights and then subsequently harassing, surrounding, and attacking a Native American elder and Vietnam veteran while chanting, Build the Wall. Absolutely disgusting. How dare you! How dare you! Disgusting! I mean, it's the current year. This is Trump's America, people. Rampant white supremacy literally everywhere. Yeah, that black kid doesn't matter. I'm sure he's, um, how would you describe him, CNN? He's, he's the token Negro of the of the Trump administration. Come on, come on, shawty. Come on, shawty. Come on, man. Anyway, within hours, the internet was ablaze with unrestrained outrage at these racist teenagers for so heinously, viciously attacking this innocent native elder. I mean, this is pretty much the 2019 equivalent of tossing a smallpox blanket on him. Look, look at this smile. It's a smallpox smile. And thus, on the side of justice, the left-leaning people on the internet, literally shaking in rage, were out for blood, seeking revenge for this man, Nathan Phillips, who described to the media just how terrified and horrified he was by the incident. I was scared. I was feared. But, no buts. We have to, we have to stand strong. We have to stand for our future, for our generations yet to come. Absolutely harrowing. Overnight, hundreds if not hundreds of thousands of people, from the average keyboard warrior and bedroom feminist to every single verified user on Twitter, was demanding that these kids, I mean, oops, sorry, we shouldn't call them kids, let's be clear, they are horrible monsters, be doxxed, along with doxing their parents and their siblings and any of their, you know, tertiarily related relatives, be harassed, have their potential colleges be contacted, be expelled from their high school, and even physically assaulted or outright murdered. This is the smirk that launched a thousand tweets. But obviously, they deserve everything they get, right? They not only approached, but surrounded, and then had the audacity to mock and harass this completely innocent native man out of their sheer unbridled racism and white privilege. Thus, we can look to the champions of Twitter, who stand for truth and justice and not for outrage at all, who showed up to expose the perpetual racism of Trump supporters that was expressed by these kids and this guy's smirking face. And by the usual suspects, I mean the likes of Sean King, who claimed that Nathan Phillips is a beloved elder within the Native American community. And another correctly responds to Sean's tweet by saying, can we find this kid and ruin his life? Good call. Pinnacle of peace, love, and justice, Kathy Griffin, added that she wanted to have all of the kids' names so that she could name and shame them, and that they would dox anybody else if given the chance. Very logical argument, Kathy. Wheeler Walker Jr. personally asked any of his fans that happened to live in the region of the school that the kids attend to go and find them and punch them. And if they did so, he would, in exchange, give them an autographed discography of all of his music. Great deal. A great deal that Reza Aslan couldn't possibly match, but similarly noted the punchable nature of the children's faces. 
Oh, and uh, he also said that about Dinesh D'Souza. Yeah, you show him, Reza. These kinds of tweets are why you still work at CNN, right? Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> Still others, like Brian, you know what, I know how you pronounce your last name, but just to piss you off, I'm gonna pronounce it this way. Brian Wagner. I wanna know what a Jew is whistling Wagner Do you for, wanna know? when he was one of the great anti-Semites of the world. You know what you are? What am I? You're a self loathing Jew. Am I? Oh, well, yes, 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 Jewish. I do hate myself, you, yes. but it has nothing to do with being Jewish. VP of Scout Comms, an organization that supports veterans, similarly noted how he wanted to punch this kid in the face. So clearly, we've got a common theme going by a bunch of big brain bibbas. Internet intellectuals. But outside of Reza, there are still other people who still work for the mainstream media, such as Maggie Haberman of the New York Times, who had to add in her own two cents, who called for the boys to be expelled from their high school. Anna Merlin of the reputable outlet Gizmodo also had the brilliant idea of throwing the kids to sharks. And I don't mean a Twitter mob, I mean literally to sharks. Our boy Kurt Hentaiwalt. What are we going to bed? Eichenwald suggested that the teenagers be denied any and all opportunities to ever work again for the rest of their lives in punishment for this horrible behavior. Because nobody's ever messed up in the past before, Kurt, now have they? Alyssa Milano noted that the MAGA hat is the new symbol of the KKK. And she's not the only one to express similar kind of sentiments on that as well. Even Captain America said this was appalling. And if Captain America gives his hot take on something, you know that it's seriously legitimate because who knows more about the politics of the average American citizen more than the Hollywood elite. Disney producer Jack Morrissey had the excellent idea of taking these kids and tossing them screaming into a wood chipper. Good thinking. That's why you're a creative producer, aren't you, Jack? But it's not just the Hollywood bigwigs who knows what's up, it's your local representatives. As Democratic Representative John Yarmuth of these criminals, and, and they are criminals obviously because we've already determined their unquestionable guilt from that clip, from their home state of Kentucky, called for a total shutdown of all teenagers who wear MAGA hats. Perhaps most importantly to this incredibly complex issue, many noted the repugnant and repulsive reprehensible nature of this one boy's disgusting smile. After all, how dare a white person smile in the presence of a person of color? This is really why we need to have separate but equal spaces, so that innocent people of color don't have to see white people smiling. Really, it's disgusting. But don't take my word for it, Hussein Kazvani noted that smiling from white people is a tragic pain that every person of color has experienced at one point in Zimzer's life. Alex Krantz, professional Christian impersonator and also of Gizmodo employee, so we can start to see the real stellar lineup of talent we've got there at Gizmodo, also a woman known for rating the Apple Watch as a better fitness tracker than a Fitbit, despite being less accurate and more expensive and having a lower battery life, just because it allowed her to play video games and text rather than, you know, work out. Well, that was the worst experience of my life. Alex noted that a smile from a white man is a weapon so powerful it will surpass Metal Gear. It can't be fought with punches, let alone with worthless words. Smiles. Smiles have changed. And luckily, we live in the advanced world of 2019, where the overwhelming power of this weapon, of the evil white male smirk, is being uncovered. Free at last from a look. But I think what we can take away from all of this is that this event was literally Trail of Tears 2.0. And every single one of these kids needs to be named and shamed. And maybe if someone, you know, accidentally becomes just a little bit too triggered, you can't blame them. And kills them or punches them, whatever. Well, that's obviously justified, as Occupy Democrats so helpfully provided close-ups of the images of every single one of their faces, asking for them and their families to be identified and doxxed. And given there's a protest planned on the school, potentially multiple protests planned at this point, who knows what might happen? Let's just hope no one brings a wood chipper. 
But it's not just verified blue check marks and Occupy Democrats. This was actually a bipartisan movement. Even Scott Adams called these kids brats originally and said that he thought they had done something pretty terrible. So that is my complete apology to the Covington Catholic School. Uh, if the administrators are watching any of this, in my opinion, you should uh, pat yourselves on the back. It looks like you did a good job uh, raising some kids. Plenty of posts on Reddit and from all over the internet, from non-verified accounts, mirrored all of these extremely woke sentiments on the inherent evil of white men, particularly white men wearing MAGA hats and smiling. Redditors rightfully called for their slow and painful deaths. Others compared them, completely accurately, to the Hitler Youth. Even others accurately noted that smiling is probably a criminal offense and called for their arrest. And they should be arrested, and have their lives ruined, and get punched, or even murdered, and their families too because they must be racist as well, right? They deserve every last thing they get. That's at least what you would have been told to believe two days after this event occurred. But what really happened here? What's he doing? Uh, he's just standing there. Menacingly! While the left is now kind of in a sort of damage control mode that I've never witnessed before, in that they can't seem to decide which way to take this, seemingly being highly split in response patterns, within a few hours, and despite the best attempts of Facebook to remove any evidence of any other angles of this video, this version and several other clips came out, providing different perspectives of the event. But most commonly, the one that you're going to see online now is this one. As evidenced, Nathan Phillips broke away from the march of demonstrators he was walking alongside. He then directly moves toward and approaches the group of teens who had been standing on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. They did not surround and attack him or mock him. He walked up to them, beating a drum in their face without any words exchanged, at least at first. But, but Aiden, okay, so what if he instigated it? They're still laughing and dancing and clearly mocking him. It's disgusting. It's racist. Um, except let's add in a little bit more context. You know, what actually happened? Ending just a few minutes before this event occurred and going back almost an hour, a group of black Hebrew Israelites were yelling obscenities, including racial and homophobic slurs at the boys who were waiting on the Lincoln Memorial steps. In order to drown out the vitriol that was being levied at them by the black Israelites, the students began to sing school cheers. This video right here might look aggressive until you understand that they were trying to get excited and be positive in the face of others attacking them. After they began to cheer, according to several reports from the students, when Phillips approached them, beating his drum, some of them assumed he was just joining in with their chant, hence why they continued to dance. They thought he was trying to get in on the fun. While others, namely this kid, and uh, for the rest of the video, I'm gonna call him Smirklenock because I want to avoid using his real name, which will only throw more fuel onto the fire of ongoing harassment that he and his family are currently facing, and also to piss off the easily offended Anyway, Smirklenocht says he wasn't sure how to respond to the event, hence his nervous smirking. No attacking, no harassment, nothing happened to this guy even from the video that the MSN posted. Just smiling and staying quiet. I seem to recall something about expressions being considered a hate crime. Now, where have I heard that before? I mean, obviously, we've set a precedent now that merely smiling at a person of color is hateful, but where have I seen this? Oh! Welcome to 201984. Hope you're enjoying the year so far where we have officially entered face crimes into the litany of punishable behaviors in our brave new world. And you know, I have to say in a morbid way, I find it pretty amusing that so many people are offended by this kid simply smiling, particularly when we see that he did nothing and said nothing to this man. He just smiled, and yet that smile is being called a symbol of white supremacy. Woo, do I have some questions for people saying those kinds of things. First, are you saying that people of color and women and whoever are so weak that the mere smirk of a white boy terrifies you into inaction where you feel incapable of having any self-efficacy? I mean, I know you are because I've shown evidence already that that is what you're saying. I don't think there are even any self-professed white supremacists, all dozen of them, even the ones that are not just LARPers. Oh, stop booing. There's nothing wrong with it. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Who think that white people are as omnipotent as people like Alex Kranz. 
Well, that was the worst experience of my life. I cannot imagine thinking white people are so incredibly awesome and so much greater than all other races that they can kill with a smile. Because that's what you're proposing here, isn't it? Secondly, I have to ask, what did you want this kid to do in response to this guy walking up to him with a drum, even in the original video that you put out? What did you want him to do? Rip off his belt? Pull down his pants and start publicly flagellating himself in repentance for daring to be white and male in front of a native? We're not worthy! We're not worthy! We're not worthy! We're stuck! I, I guess obviously, right? I'm actually not trying to be entirely sarcastic in my questioning there. I have to ask, what did you want him to do? What would have satiated your bloodlust? Can anyone answer that in earnest? Because he did nothing but nervously smile at a stranger who walked up to him, beating a drum, inches away from his face, after having been harangued for the better part of an hour. And by harangued, I mean this. If you watch the actual footage, you will note that these students were called racial and homophobic slurs. Why you ain't, you got all these dirty ass crackers behind you with a red, with a red... Make America Great hat again on, and your coon ass, you want to fight your brothers. You got all these racist bastards with red, you nigga, you nigga, with all these crackers with, with racist ass Make America Great hats on, and you going to talk about you going to get violent with us. Get your, get your old Uncle Tom ass out of here. Oh, that's racist. When you get old enough, they're going to steal your organs. This is a bunch of future school shooters. That's right. That's right. This is a faggot child molester. This ain't Jesus the Christ. But you give faggots rights. But Smirkle knocked himself. The true great Satan, he actually steps back and discourages one of his friends, saying, essentially, you know, it's not worth it, man. Just back off. Play it cool. Which is what he did when Nathan Phillips walked up into his face with his drum. Played it as cool as he possibly could as a 16-year-old or 17-year-old. And it was probably a good idea to not engage with the Black Hebrew Israelites, because, um, while it's not yet considered a hate crime to wear a MAGA hat, although I'm sure soon it will be, the Black Hebrew Israelites are considered a hate group according to the SPLC. Why are they considered a hate group, Aiden? Oh, well, I don't know. Here they are just peacefully interacting with a Jewish man. Oh, six million of who the Holocaust! Are you boo, saying the Holocaust boo, is a boo, joke? Boo. It's a joke. That's, That's right! Man. That's, That's right. right! Don't shoot Hitler! Don't shoot the Hitler! The Holocaust is a damn joke! That's right! The Holocaust, the Holocaust is a joke! Right. Hitler! Oh, you can yeah, cry, white boy! Hail Hitler! And here they are just peacefully spreading the good word of their truth to a woman. He, he hey, says in... Yeah, get out of right. here, man. We, we ain't none of them guys, all right? You ain't about to come up here and call I'm no sorry. spectacle. I'm call the sorry. cops. Did, call did the cops Did any of you call see him just physically yeah, yeah. assaulted? Call the cops. Hey, don't don't touch touch me. Me. But we don't even have to leave this self-same protest because before all of this stuff happened that was reported on by the media, the black Hebrew Israelites were insulting the Native American protesters. You're not supposed to worship eagles, buffaloes, That's rams, right. Right. all types of animals. That's right. This is the reason why the Lord took away your land. Indian does not mean savage. Indian means savage, brother. I don't know where you got that from. Look it up, brother. I did look it up. I'm a historian. So, while you might say that these kids were acting rowdy and rude, and I wouldn't disagree with you there, you have to understand what happened in context. Everything exists in a context, and when you take a little clip, completely remove all of the surrounding variables and factors, then you can start to spin a narrative. Yes, these kids were being loud and dancing and chanting, but they were doing so to drown out hatred that was being lobbed at them from this group, only to then have Nathan Phillips get up in their face and toss a little bit more onto the pyre. Yeah, the mainstream media didn't really include this part, for example, that happens just a few seconds later. Why did you go back to Europe when you came here? This is not your land. No, it's not. You've been here for three generations compared to us. Where 
haven't I heard that before? Would probably tell him you have to go back. Build that seawall, right, Kimosabe? But remember, you can't be racist to white people. Uh, again, what about that black kid right there? Um, the one that the, the Israelites called um, some big words? Yeah, forget about him, forget about him. Just memory hole him. And memory holing is what I completely anticipated the media to do as soon as the full footage became impossible to erase. Because initially, this footage was removed from Facebook. It was being removed from everywhere, but at this point, it's too ubiquitous to get rid of. The internet never forgets, nor does it forgive. And speaking of evidence, despite there being multiple recordings of this event from every possible angle, there is really not any good evidence of these kids ever shouting build the wall either. I heard them saying build that wall, build that wall. There is this clip. All these dusty ass crackers with that racist garbage on. Look at these dirty ass crackers. Can't stand in the damn sun for five minutes. Why you don't build the damn wall? Can't but that's it. It was just a claim that was being tossed around on Twitter, and now, interestingly, no one can seem to confirm it. You know, decide for yourself. But it is interesting that so many are walking back the claim of them shouting build the wall now. In fact, I've actually been kind of pleasantly surprised, sort of, that there are any people, let alone several on Twitter, who are bravely admitting that they may have potentially made just a little tiniest itty bitty bitsy bits of an oopsie just a day after calling for these kids to be strung up and flogged. Even Jake Tapper conceded, albeit in quotations, that the media may have gotten this one wrong, because they've never done that before or anything. Of course, they did this entirely out of the good and kindness of their own hearts. Not because multiple lawyers and legal firms immediately following this debacle began salivating and chomping at the bit at the thought of representing either these kids or their school or both with some directly tweeting to the lights of Anna Navarro to retract her statements about the situation lest she face serious legal recourse. One debt to society later. It's weird, it's almost like slander and libel, particularly that which endangers the lives of those to whom it targets, is illegal. It's almost like journalists have a responsibility to report on information like this accurately. Oh, never mind, I'm sorry, I forgot what year it was again. Not anymore, clearly. But still, some are adamant about their initial assessments, and are doubling down, including our good old pal Kurt Eichenwald and Reza Aslan. Others, in a fit of some extreme cognitive dissonance, something we'll talk about later, began to seek desperately for any evidence of wrongdoing coming from anyone even remotely associated with the school. This included some really brilliant displays of just pretending to be retarded. Doesn't make any sense, isn't it? Your boss or your grandmom would think you are completely retarded. So, make sure you use the right language, the right words. From people in the throes of the psychological discomfort of being utterly and completely proven wrong and then potentially also being legally liable for engaging in acts of defamation. In order to help quell some of that dissonance and fear, I would suppose, a picture was found, reportedly, I believe, from 2013, although I've seen some quotes that it was 2011 and some that says it's 2015, but it's several years old, regardless, of other Covington students that shows these racist students in blackface, and they are harassing a black athlete. Except, this image depicts what's called a blackout, or blackout rally. It's a relatively common type of event that some high school and college students engage in as a form of displaying group solidarity. Not to white supremacy, but to their school or for school spirit. I mean, it's not like anyone's ever heard of students painting themselves in all different types of colors of body paint all the time or anything at sporting events. Or even of this exact same school, Covington, doing the same thing multiple times with different colors. They did a whiteout too, are you mad about their white face here? The weirdest thing is that even I know what a blackout is, and I have never given a single flip about sport ball, any sport ball. So either the people that are tweeting this kind of stuff are being willfully ignorant and pretty damn unfamiliar with attending high schools or college, and I have to be clear on this too, I went to an art high school, we didn't have any sports teams, and even I know what this is, so willfully ignorant or I'm not sure you went to school. But I also have another reason for not being quite sure if any of the people claiming these things went to high school. 
pretty much just the median age that I've seen this picture being reported as originating from is 2013. That's five years ago. In the United States, high school is four years. That means there is no way <laughs> that any of the kids who were on the Lincoln Memorial steps when this event occurred could possibly have been wearing so-called blackface. And again, it's not blackface, it might be distasteful in your opinion, and that's your opinion, but this is a sign of school identity, solidarity, and social identity in application. But just to make sure, I'd like to ask everybody who thinks posting a five-year-old picture is somehow evidence of things that kids at the school today are doing, to try to work out the math between the fact that high school takes four years and this picture is five years old. Let them work that out. Probably in a couple days, they'll get back to us. But wait, there's more to come. More evil racist activity. Several on Twitter have pointed out that the students had engaged in an equally heinous hate crime of displaying the now infamous symbol of white power, the OK sign. Despite the fact that the entire conflation or description of the OK hand symbol as one of white supremacy is a now well-documented hoax that was dreamed up on a Mongolian basket weaving forum, here we are in the current year pretending to be retarded. Did you just forget that this got completely blown out as a hoax last year? Guess not. <laughs> Moreover, it seems kind of strange to me, though, that there are so many pictures of black basketball players also throwing up this totally not fake hate symbol. It's almost like, and I, I know, I know, hang on, hang on with me here for a second, guys. It's almost like this symbol in basketball indicates a three-point shot or something. I know nothing about sports. Any of them, be it hand egg or dive grass or ice fight or what have you. And even I know this. If I can figure this out through a quick Google search, you should be able to. But you don't want to because you're stuck in an instance of cognitive dissonance. And rather than having to deal with the fact that you were wrong and that the media lied to you, you have to try to create or seek any sort of confirming information that reaffirms your preconceived notions about the school and the children who attend it. Despite similar attempts to further label Smurglenock's mother as a racist because she, I mean, did wrongfully identify the people who were attacking her son in DC as Muslims rather than Black Hebrew Israelites, despite the fact that she completely accurately noted that they were the ones instigating the intergroup animosity, it has now become fairly obvious to anyone paying attention to any side of the story that what the media presented was far from an accurate depiction of events. Again, when we look at these statements made by the students, their story, unlike that of the media, is fairly consistent across different people. The kids were in town to attend a Right to Life march, a pro-life event in DC, as the school does apparently every year. Now, you can love or hate that course of action, but if you are on the hate side, I would ask, did you have a problem with teachers busing kids to the March for Our Lives protest following the Parkland shooting last year? If you're okay with one and not with the other, then you're suffering from some cognitive dissonance of your own. All I ask is people be internally consistent. I would also like to quickly note that this march was repeatedly reported on in the media as an anti-choice or anti-woman march. That is a product of media framing. Should I refer to the Women's March this week, which hilariously is now no longer associated with the DNC, given that the organizer is affiliated with the actual anti-Semite Louis Farrakhan? Should I call that an anti-life march? Do you see how that sounds bad? This is basic media framing. But regardless of all of that, they were at a pro-life march. And after the march, they went and did some sightseeing, and then they were told to all meet up at the Lincoln Memorial and wait for their buses to take them back to Kentucky. While waiting there, they were verbally accosted by the Black Hebrew Israelites, and now despite the fact that Nathan Phillips has been ousted as instigating this incident by walking towards the students, they did nothing beyond sing and chant. They did not attack, they did not harass, as far as I can tell, they did not mock anyone. Yet even among some of the people that are walking this back and trying to forget about it or apologize a little bit for misreporting, Nathan Phillips is still being portrayed as a victim. Why? Seemingly just because he's a Native American. And in the past, it's true, white people did some really crappy things to the Native American people of this country. That's undeniable. Namely, Democrats like Andrew Jackson. But no, despite the fact that he instigated it, he's still being portrayed as a martyr. And I find that a bit disturbing because I see where it's coming from. Because once again, kind of hilariously, it seems that the left buys into the very noble savage trope that they supposedly hate so much. 
There's a lot of young people in this country just like myself who really know where the Indian's at. And don't worry, soon we're all going to be out here on the reservation, living like Indians and dressing like Indians and doing all the simple, beautiful things that you Indians do. You got any peyote? But is he really an innocent victim? It doesn't take much time to look into Mr. Phillips to see that he is a perpetual professional victim who has pulled this exact same stump before and is not, my dear Talcum X, a beloved elder, but rather is someone who has been described by multiple people who know him as, at best, a bit unhinged in his politics. A supposed personal friend of Phillips contacted Nick Monroe on Twitter and said that although he believes Phillips is a good guy, his method of protesting is odd? An Omaha World Herald article from 2000 written on the man, who at the time was living in a series of temporary structures on the National Mall because something something discrimination, but really because his truck broke down and caught fire when he and his wife and children hit the district, noted how he couldn't really even describe or define his own concerns or desires for First Nations peoples, or why he was protesting. The article also notes that he was a former alcoholic and had spent considerable time in and out of jail. In this article, a tribal leader said Phillips is, quote, regarded back in Nebraska as a well-intentioned brother struggling to cope with a troubled childhood. Phillips was removed from his mother at the age of five and lived with adoptive or foster families. While he disappeared more or less from the media eye for several years, he showed back up prominently in 2015 when he claimed he was walking down the street and happened to come across an Indian-themed costume party being thrown by, what do you know it, a bunch of college students this time from East Michigan University. In an interview with Fox 2 Detroit, he described how the students claimed that they were being respectful to his culture and trying to celebrate it, but he became irate and called the police. But, interestingly, by the time the cops arrived, strangely, there was no party there. There is thereby no real proof that anything happened outside of Nathan Phillips' account, which I obviously cannot confirm or deny because there is no evidence but I have to ask, this happened in mid-April. A costume party on a lawn in mid-April in Michigan. Just a little skeptical. I actually looked up how hot it would have been in mid-April of that year, and it was a nice, pretty balmy 50 to 60 degrees. And further, while I also can't confirm this, or his involvement in it specifically, here is an article from Indians.com in September of 2018 reporting on several native tribes filing a lawsuit against Trump for his approval of the Keystone XL pipeline, which featured Nathan performing a traditional ceremony in its title image. But one of the things most frequently reported in association with Nathan Phillips in this whole debacle is his veteran status. Not only did these kids disrespect a Native American, they disrespected and mocked a Native American veteran. According to Mr. Phillips, he enlisted in the Marines, and in an interview with Vogue in 2018, he stated that he was a, quote, recon ranger, which, um, isn't a thing? Now, maybe he just misspoke, although I was a little bit concerned when military people or people claiming to be military get very obvious things wrong. So a little bit, little bit suspect there, but, but maybe he just made a mistake, or maybe the person writing down his interview made a mistake. Or maybe he picked up that term from a song and has no idea that Recon Ranger isn't a thing. I do want to be clear and careful here, though, because suggesting that someone is engaging in stolen valor is a serious accusation. But so is stealing valor. Here's what we know, though. Phillips was born in 1955 and claims to have enlisted in the Marines at the age of 17. Except here's the problem. If we take him at his word, which he's been saying for years, he would have been able to join the Marines at the age of 17 in the year 1972, at which point Marine forces had been predominantly withdrawn from Vietnam, with only 500 troops remaining even by July of 1971. So while it is possible that Mr. Phillips served in the Marines, I've also seen some new information that's been released in the last couple of hours that suggests that he did serve, although he was AWOL several times during his service, still nothing confirms that he ever saw active combat duty, at least not in Vietnam. I've also still seen a little bit of controversy over what his actual name is, and as we've learned kind of recently, uh, Indians may sometimes have a proclivity to change their names. But regardless, it's pretty much impossible for him to have possibly enlisted at 17, completed not just basic training, but whatever additional training was required for him to become a um, recon ranger. I mean, outside of some extreme tomfoolery involving lying about his age, there's just no way it could have realistically happened. The Marines started pulling out troops in 1970, 
By 71, again in July, there were only 500 left, and they were senior officers and integral staff. Of which he would have been neither, as an 18-year-old, right out of boot camp recruit. I'm not saying it is absolutely impossible, but it's extremely suspect. And I find it very interesting that in light of all of the evidence against his service that's come out over the last couple days, the left response has been to say, oh, well, he never claimed to be a vet. Apparently we're the ones who did that, our oopsie again. He just claimed to be a veteran of the Vietnam era. Yeah, nice work at deflection there. Regardless of who Nathan Phillips is, though, it doesn't really matter because the truth has been uncovered. And despite the fact that some on the left are desperately trying to maintain the narrative that this really was a hate crime, the footage itself can't lie. Data are. The best bet for them now is really just to continually cut up any footage that they can find into tiny little portions and misconstrue it or pretend that it never happened at all. Those are really their only two options. As I said, there have been a few people, particularly celebrities with uh, larger profiles, who have started to walk back their claims and heinous statements, but it's too little, far too late. The damage has already been done, and there is no way to ameliorate it with paltry apologies. And moreover, I don't think they're doing it out of the goodness and kindness of their hearts. Because, in part, it's very possible that some serious legal crap is about to go down. And maybe once, for once, someone will be held responsible for slinging some serious slander. But why? Why did this clip become international news? Well, friends, in closing, let me explain. A few days before this video went viral, BuzzFeed published an article in which the author contended that an inside source had confirmed to him that Trump had instructed Michael Cohen, his former lawyer, to lie before Congress, despite the fact that Cohen had already pled guilty and had been sentenced for lying before Congress, meaning that the investigation regarding him had been resolved. Still, it's a potential bombshell of an allegation. It's too bad that within 24 hours, Mueller's own office refuted the article as completely inaccurate. <laughs> BuzzFeed still stands behind it, by the way. But uh, Mueller, up until now, had been basically the savior of the left. They were waiting for him to impeach Trump, to find some evidence that shows that Trump colluded with the Russians, that he broke the law, that he can be finally impeached. Please save us, Mr. Mueller. You're our only hope. But uh, now, the second that Mueller says, uh, no, that's not true, that's false, and you made that up, you know, Mueller's someone I've never been a particularly big fan of, just because he had, you know, sensible nature to correct an outright lie, now all of a sudden he's person non grata as well. I bring this up because, to me, the entire story was invented outrage, designed and propped up only to serve as a method of erasing the BuzzFeed oopsie from the public perception, along with the fact that the Democrats immediately shot down Trump's proposal to secure funding for the border wall, which they said that they wanted to negotiate over. You know, until they actually had to negotiate, <laughs> at which point they posed a ridiculous counteroffer that completely shut down any and all funding for the wall. Pelosi and her ilk claim that they care about DACA, yet they unquestionably rejected Trump's planned extension of the program. They claim they wanted to end the government shutdown, despite receiving their own salaries, of course, yet made no serious attempt to play ball with Trump. In a week, the Democrats and the mainstream media engaged in some serious lies and hypocrisy that were put on display for the American people, and they were catching just a little bit too much heat. So what better way to draw attention away from their mistakes than by inventing some outrage? I guess too bad for them that they got caught red-hatted. I, I mean red-handed. As frustrating as this is, the consequences of this pathetic attempt at diversion has already had a serious impact on the lives of these kids and of their families, who are still being attacked, harassed, and potentially may even be physically assaulted, may lose their jobs or their future education prospects. And why? Because on some level, the truth doesn't matter. The falsehoods have already been spread, and as such, there will always be people who, on some level, be they partisan or some of them just misinformed by the scandalous headlines, who will be permanently swayed to believe that these kids are all just a bunch of racist bigots who should be torn asunder. Well, I usually talk a lot about theories of psychology. Really, the main theme here today is a very simple one, that being cognitive dissonance. We never want to think that we're wrong, and that includes thinking that those within our social group are wrong as well. This creates the feeling of psychological discomfort, and in order to alleviate that feeling, we really have two options. One is to accept new information that contradicts what we previously believed or said. However, that's extremely difficult and exacerbates the discomfort. The second is to deny or ignore conflictory information, which is the method utilized by almost all of us, myself included, simply because it minimizes the psychological suffering induced by this contradiction. 
For the people, particularly those who are either highly partisan against Trump and his supporters, or who are particularly prone to believe in an unjust world where people are always bad and negative things constantly happen to innocent good people, a trait that is more prevalent in the left, a thing we will learn about more in my next video, their minds have already been made up and are unlikely to change given the nature of dissonance. But rather than me going on and on trying to describe dissonance to you, why don't I just show you an example of it that's related to this very topic. This person responded to me on Twitter, they were pretty upset, and as you can see, some extremely acute cognitive dissonance going on in one post, where the word untrue is not the same as inaccurate. This, my friends, is a mind trying to cope with information that conflicts with their preconceived notions or worldviews. While on some level he acknowledges that the BuzzFeed article was inaccurate, he can't also define it as untrue. And I'm sorry I'm using a general he, I'm pretty sure this person is a, a zimzer. <laughs> but we saw this kind of similarly with the Steele dossier. Even when information came out that showed that it was inaccurate, or at least not very reliable, it didn't matter. It might still be true, therefore it is true. Well, it doesn't matter that Mueller said that this was not true, or that this was inaccurate, it might still be true anyway. Not because there's any evidence, but because I previously expressed belief in it. It's all about internal consistency. That, my friends, is cognitive dissonance in a nutshell. The original purpose of journalism, as it evolved, was to disseminate the truth in a digestible way, such as the average Joe could figure out what happened today, without having to ruminate too heavily on verifying the information as accurate or inaccurate for himself. Yet despite, once again, being revealed as heavily unreliable, biased, and agenda-driven, those who read a headline are unlikely to change their minds or search for more data for those reasons I've mentioned. Thus, it's not just possible, but actually quite probable, that these kids, their families, and their school will continue to be viciously attacked by those who already hate them. And, well, that's why libel and slander are illegal, again! But even if Anna Navarro and others in the media who promoted this narrative end up in some deep shit, for their involvement in spreading legitimately fake news, that won't stop people like this from wishing death on these kids, and potentially even acting upon those wishes. And it's not like we've never seen that before. As funny as it is to watch the media get caught in a massive lie and scandal like this, a lie they invented to distract from another lie, hilariously enough, it's not funny for the real people who have to suffer from the portrayal that has been laid upon them, and likely will continue to suffer for the foreseeable future because of this. I can only hope that this event will deal a serious blow that will reach even to those rare few who still blindly believe in the legacy media's credibility. But even if it does, nothing can be done to undo the damage that's already been incurred. I stand behind the students, families, and faculty of Covington Catholic, and I hope we don't allow this to be flushed down the memory hole, because it is so easy to give up on goodwill. But hatred, like that we've seen aimed at these people and these kids over the last few days, that is a much stronger emotion that typically lasts for a considerably lengthier period of time. Never forget this, lest we allow this to happen again. And for people on both sides, don't condemn and attack people before you confirm the information. And unfortunately, you have to do that now, because the media no longer provides the service that it was supposedly designed to do. Let's not so easily, therefore, allow the media to get off without repercussion this time, so easily to just forget this event. Because those who irrationally hate and I mean hate, they won't forgive, and they won't forget. Sorry for ending on a sad note, but if you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. I'm Aiden Paladin, all a ton of old.